Hey guys, welcome to my channel, and today we are going to talk about Vagrant. Um, so we're going to go over the theory of Vagrant, and uh, also the installation. So if you want to just get to, right into the installation, uh, click the link below. Um, otherwise, here is the basic theory of Vagrant. So Vagrant is a tool for building and managing virtual machine environments with ease. Virtual machines can be configured and created in just a few minutes or less, and the text-based configuration allows you to be very consistent with the way you deliver your virtual machines. On the screen here, I have an example of a Vagrant configuration. As you can see, the configuration is very small and simple, but it's all you actually need to get started. Uh, in there, you have the image name, a host name, and an IP address. So the image name is the most important piece of your configuration. You'll actually have an image name for all your Vagrant configurations. This tells the Vagrant which image to go out and download and use for your virtual machine. So you can see we're using uh, Ubuntu 18.04 here. The VM name isn't required, but it can help you organize your uh, virtual machines with uh, a name. And the uh, IP address, there's actually a lot of options that you can use here. I find this is the simplest one when you're just getting started is to bridge to the private network. Uh, you can also have uh, natting rules and everything like that, but you'll need to do port forwarding with that. So stick with this when you're just getting started. All right, so the most important thing with Vagrant is the images themselves. So you can find these online on the official Vagrant website, vagrantup.com. And there you can run a search. I've done a search for Ubuntu 18.04 here. And uh, I'm going to work with this image, the bento slash Ubuntu 18.04. So if I go in here, it gives me uh, two different options. Uh, the first option is to use it in a configuration file, or you can manually create that configuration file yourself by running uh, the commands here, vagrant init, and then providing the image name. And then after you initialize the file, I do vagrant up, and that'll bring it up. But before we get into uh, bringing up our virtual machines, I'm going to get uh, the Vagrant software installed as well as the provider software. So to install Vagrant, we are going to go to vagrantup.com slash downloads.html and we will choose the version for our operating system. I am on Windows 64-bit, so I will be downloading this one. And we'll just wait until this download completes here. All right, we're fully downloaded here. So I'll just go ahead and click on it. And uh, Windows is trying to protect me. So I'll say more info. And yeah, let's run this anyway. I'll pull that over here. And... Uh, It'll just take a minute to compute here. One eternity later. That took way longer than expected. Thank you for staying with us here. Let's go ahead and hit next. Read the terms. Make sure you read them very carefully here. Accept them and go next. And uh, I will accept the default location and go ahead and install. This will take a few minutes here, but once the installation is done, you'll need to reboot your machine, and then we can get started with the provider installation. And if you're wondering what a provider is, it's a virtual machine environment, like VirtualBox, VMware, or uh, Microsoft Hyper-V. In our tutorials, we will always be using VirtualBox, so we will get started with the VirtualBox installation next. So our computer is done restarting now, and uh, now we want to install VirtualBox, so we'll just go to virtualbox.org 
and download VirtualBox 6.1, which will work for our requirements. And uh, we want it for Windows here. So we'll download it. And uh, send a text message or two while we're waiting. And our download is complete. So I'll go ahead and open this. And basically just click next through all the installation items. All right, so it looks like our installation is complete, so we can just exit out of here and uh, let's get started. All right, so we are in our terminal here and uh, we're gonna get Vagrant started here by running our first command. So it's gonna be Vagrant init and then the image that we wanna use. We'll go ahead and hit enter. And this should create our very first Vagrant file. And you can see that uh, it finished there. And if we do uh, an ls, we can see that there's one file in here called the Vagrant file. And if we open that up in Notepad, you can see that it's created a file here, but there's most of it's commented out. I'm going to go ahead and remove these comments. All right. So it's just one line in here. And you can see it's the config.vm.box, and then we have the image. And then uh, we're going to add an additional uh, configuration here. So the next line we're going to add is uh, config.vm.hostname. And I like to give my virtual machines a unique name. So I'll just say vm1. And then we're going to do config.vm.network. And there's lots of different options you can use here, but we're going to, I'm going to copy and paste something. And we're just going to use our private network and assign this IP address, which is on the same subnet that I already have a network card on. Go ahead and save that. And I'm going to type, uh, clear the screen and I'll do vagrant up. And uh, this will actually go out and download that image if you don't have it already downloaded. Um, so this command will take qu quite a bit longer for you to run if you haven't run it before. Uh, once the image is downloaded, it's going to start building the actual virtual machine. So I'll just let this uh, run in the background. I'll probably speed this up and uh, I'll meet you on the other side when this is completed. All right, so it looks like it is completed and it went through everything okay. So now if I do a ping 172.16.1.1, it looks like it's responding to a ping. And uh, I'll just do a vagrant SSH. Now, since this is the only vagrant uh, file within my directory, it will know which machine to go into. If I had built multiple virtual machines, I would actually have to specify the machine name. But this command will work in our situation, so just vagrant ssh. And uh, it does take a, a little bit to connect to. Um, so we're just going to wait it out. Okay, so it looks like it's connected. We can see that we're in a Linux shell now. and. Uh, it gives all the the information in regards to uh, this image and if we do like an ls our present working directory you can see we're in the home slash vagrant directory if uh, we go to the root there you can see the full Linux file structure 
And uh, the one thing you may notice is this special folder here, the Vagrant folder. If you hop into there and then do an ls, you can see that uh, you can see the Vagrant file. And this is the exact same Vagrant file that uh, we just created. And that's because this directory is actually shared. So if I pull this up in Windows, and uh, if I go to the Vagrant directory here, where we initially created our Vagrant file, and if I create a new file and just uh, go my new file.txt, go in and just do ASDF, ASDF, hit save, clear my screen here, and if I do another ls, I can see that new file, and if I look at that file, I can see uh, the contents of that file. So basically what that tells you is between the virtual machine and the host machine, uh, anything in that directory is shared. So it's a very convenient, wa convenient way, it's a very convenient way to uh, share files between the host and the virtual machine. And uh, the last thing I want to show you is VirtualBox itself. If I pull up the provider, you can see I have a bunch of virtual machines here, but the one we're interested in is the one I just created. And uh, usually it would be called VM1, but I think I already had a host in there named VM1, and it's probably deleted, but it's in the back end. So it made a unique name for me, so that's why it's it got a strange name there. Uh, but we can see it's up and it's showing this current status. So if you ever need to troubleshoot, make sure the machine's on or off and you don't want to use the vagrant commands. You can just pull up the provider virtual box and go in there and see the status. And the other thing I want to talk about is the directory that uh, the vagrant file is in. So as I mentioned, the vagrant files there, any files that you put in there are shared, and then there's the hidden directory that got created when we first initialized vagrant. And if you go in there, you can see that there's a folder structure to it, but basically just a bunch of files, and what these files are, basically IDs and everything, and it's basically just tracking the virtual machine so when you do like vagrant in it and or sorry vagrant up um, it knows the virtual machine id and tells it to VirtualBox. so that's sort of how it does all that in the back end uh, you probably won't need to change any of these files or even go and view them but it's just good to know that they're there so I just want to remind everyone that you can head over in the links below in the description and head over to my GitHub and everything that I did today is available in GitHub. Each uh, video corresponds with uh, a folder here. So if you pop on over to Bradmorg slash Vagrant Labs and uh, just go into Lab 1, you can see everything we did, installed Vagrant, installed Oracle VirtualBox and all the commands. And yeah, please go ahead and head on over there if you need any of the commands that we ran today. And if you found the video helpful, please uh, like the video. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time.